I fell in love with Grace I'm sorry, Salonia Salonia looked at her fiancé tilde copyright s face as he confessed the affair he wasn't avoiding her gaze, nor did he show any change in his expression I didn't want to say this to you, who has just woken up, but I hope to get it done as soon as possible I want to hurry up and marry Grace Salonia, leaning against the bedhead felt speechless for several months, she had hovered near death and was revived the moment she came back to life, her fiancé Tilda Copyright, whom she thought had come to visit her, immediately confessed his affair why was this man so confident and expressionless while asking to break off their engagement, there was no regret or guilt in his eyes she doubted if this man was really the person she had been with for six months I'll give you alimony so you won't feel disappointed Ian spoke again when she didn't respond his forehead was wrinkled, showing a strong desire to finish this matter quickly Salonia, reading his annoyance, felt her chest throb in Cherville. Her fiancé Tilda Copyright, was a man her family had chosen for her although she didn't love him romantically, she had liked him she admired his confident attitude and courage yet, she never imagined he would be confident in such a situation when she first kissed him, she didn't hear bells ringing, but she thought it would be okay to have a future together she didn't expect to be stabbed in the back like this ha, huh? Salonia you're not the type to be pathetic like this he inside with a tired expression his silent, attitude and gaze were unfamiliar after half a year together she realized his heart for her was completely gone alright, let's break up the engagement her firm voice broke the silence there was no need to contemplate any more if a man asked his fiancé tilde copyrighty, who had just escaped death, to break up their engagement without asking if she was feeling well she would do it without hesitation yeah, then if you send me the breakup papers, I'll take care of it, Ian answered with a bright face, taking her aback in return, I will receive alimony as much as I want so wait until I ask for it please leave your written oath what, Ian frowned, unprepared for her request why, shouldn't the calculation be correct to that extent, Salonia raised her head proudly Ian, clearly annoyed, took out a paper and pen and scribbled down the contents Salonia bit her lip to, hide her trembling she had trusted a man who turned out to be like this she felt foolish, she hated him for making their six months together meaningless but she wouldn't, show it he would not affect her life any longer are you satisfied now? Ian roughly threw the finished contract at her she quietly gripped the paper, the price of their time together, oh, and one more thing Salonia summoned Ian who was about to leave what else? Ian furrowed his eyebrows, furious will you come closer? It's the last one, you know Salonia reached, out her hand with a pitiful expression Ian sighed, thinking she wanted a final handshake, and came closer Salonia stretched out her hand and slapped him hard it stung, more than she thought what are you doing? Ian, angry and surprised, glared at her, I'm quite lame you've done enough to get hit, and I deserve to hit you right? Surely you're not narrow-minded, enough to be provoked by this, are you? Salonia retorted Ian, unable to answer, grumbled and turned around I'll be going you don't have to come to my wedding bye I won't see you off the door closed, and Ian was gone Salonia clenched her fists, tears welled up in her eyes, but she didn't want to cry her tears were too precious for him, today was the second day since she woke up after struggling with death for over three months it was also nine months after she possessed the female lead in the novel, surviving from the demon king Salonia Vesne, the twenty-one-year-old daughter of the Duke of Vesne, was the female lead she had healing powers and a fiancé tilde copyright, Ian Cherville, set by her grandparents they didn't develop feelings for each other until they fought the demon king they grew closer during the journey, and with two other companions, Ref Hetzel and MacLean. They defeated the Demon King the original story ended with a happy wedding for Salonia and Ian Salonia squeezed her temples she had possessed Salonia, Vesna at the start of her journey to defeat the Demon King, enduring hardships for six months she faced death and injuries countless times on the way back, she collapsed with unknown pain and thought she would die but she woke up after three months she thought all that was left was a smooth path instead, Ian demanded a breakup saying he loved someone else Miss Salonia, the voice snapped her out of her thoughts I heard the story, Ref thank you for visiting me often while I was down she thanked Ref Hetzel, a holy knight, 
and one of the Subma leads who had a crush on her I'm glad you're feeling well, Miss Salonia Ref, looking at his toes, seemed strange he always looked at her directly I heard the news that you broke your engagement with Duke Ian Salonia tasted bitterness she had sent the breakup letter just yesterday, and today's newspaper featured the news it happened like that Salonia took a sip of tea, hiding her disappointment the bonds formed over six months ended with a signed piece of paper it must be difficult, but I'm sorry I want to make the night so thigh made to you as if it never happened Salonia, surprised, spit out her tea I have another lady I want to take care of for the rest of my life ref, unable to meet her eyes, stared at his teacup Salonia's eyes widened no way, no way I will swear an eternal oath to Miss Grace Bennett. Salonia didn't love Ian Cherville, the male lead in the original story she now found herself in unlike the original female lead, the possessed Salonia's feelings for Ian were rooted in human affection and camaraderie, not romantic love despite enduring many life-threatening adventures together, she saw Ian as a trustworthy companion, not a romantic partner Ian had all the qualities of a hero always kind and self-sacrificing, even in the harshest conditions he never complained, always putting her needs before his own it was no wonder anyone would have a crush on him, but Salonia's feelings remained platonic she had no complaints about her destiny to marry him, as it seemed a fitting conclusion after their shared trials she anticipated a life together post Demon King's defeat, akin to the original story's happy ending however, she didn't foresee the drastic changes awaiting her Salonia was blindsided by Ian's infidelity and the abrupt shift in her life ref, the sub-male lead and her first friend, confessed he had fallen for Grace Bennett, the very woman Ian was now involved with ref's declaration marked the end of their relationship though Salonia appreciated his honesty and the friendship they had shared, she was left reeling from the betrayal ref's heartfelt apology was genuine but it didn't ease Salonia's turmoil he was sincere in his love for Grace, and Salonia had to accept his decision her disappointment was palpable, but she masked it with gratitude for their time together, knowing Ref's feelings had shifted irreversibly Salonia grappled with the surreal situation she had been prepared to live as Salonia, embracing her new identity but the deviations from the original story were disorienting the male lead's sudden interest in Grace Bennett, an extra in the original narrative. Baffled her their changing hearts seemed inexplicable and Cruella, her loyal servant, sensed Salonia's distress but couldn't offer much solace just as Salonia was trying to process Ref's departure, McLean, another sub-male lead, burst in demanding the return of the dragon heart he had once given her he too had fallen for Grace Bennett Salonia's disbelief deepened as McLean confirmed her, suspicions McLean's brazen request and the mention of Grace's name yet again pushed Salonia to the brink the repetition, of Grace Bennett's name from each of the male lead's lips was a bitter pill to swallow Salonia's, composure cracked, and she laughed, a sound tinged with madness and despair the, inexplicable shift in their affections toward Grace, a character who wasn't even significant in the original story, felt like a cruel twist of fate Salonia's realization that she was now the one left behind, abandoned by all the male leads she had known, was devastating she couldn't understand why or how everything had gone so wrong Salonia's mind raced as she tried to make sense of the chaos around her why had Ian cheated? Why had Ref and McLean fallen for Grace? Was there some underlying reason, or had their hearts simply changed? Salonia felt a deep sense of betrayal and confusion, unable to grasp the reality of her situation left alone in the drawing room, Salonia's thoughts spiraled she had hoped for a stable future but now she was adrift, her connections severed, and her trust shattered, the once clear path laid out by the original story was now obscured, and she faced an uncertain future, the echoes of the male lead's footsteps lingered, and Salonia sat down heavily on the sofa, feeling the weight of their departures she pondered her next move, realizing that she could no longer rely on the story's original narrative she would have to forge her own path independent of the men who had once been her allies Salonia resolved to stay strong despite the upheaval she would navigate this new reality, even if it meant redefining her relationships and her role in the story the betrayal by those she trusted was a harsh lesson, but it also steeled her resolve to survive and thrive on her own terms.
Salonia observed Maclean's departure with a tumultuous blend of emotions, swirling inside her the once steady ground beneath her feet felt precarious, as if the fabric of reality itself was threatening to tear apart despite her inner turmoil, she maintained a facade of calm, refusing to let Maclean or anyone else see the depths of her, pain and confusion miss, Ella's voice broke through her thoughts, laced with concern Salonia's gaze remained fixed on the window watching Maclean's figure grow smaller and smaller until he was nothing more than a distant memory she could feel the weight of Ella's worry, but she couldn't bring herself to respond just yet how can everyone be like this? Our miss has just woken up, they're really too much, Ella's words were a reflection of the injustice Salonia felt, but couldn't yet articulate Salonia's silence was her shield, protecting the fragile remnants of her composure she knew that if she spoke, the dam would break and the torrent of emotions she was holding back would consume her but she couldn't stay silent forever Ella, she finally said, her voice steady but cold yes, yes if you need anything, just tell me I will never leave your side Ella's eagerness to help was palpable, a small comfort in the storm of Salonia's thoughts what if you made a dish with the ingredients you worked hard to find while climbing a mountain and going through the brink of death at the edge of a cliff, and someone else devoured it, Ella blinked clearly taken aback by the question pardon, wouldn't you be very angry, sad, and annoyed I probably won't let the person who stole it from me a broken Barcelona's A's blazed with a fire that had been ignited by betrayal and a fierce sense of injustice indeed that's how I feel right now isn't it funny, she clenched her fists, the anger that had been simmering beneath the surface now boiling over, it wasn't just the betrayal by McLean that stung it was the cumulative weight of all the men who had professed love for her, only to abandon her for Grace Bennett, the memories of her past nine months in this world flashed before her eyes, she had fought tooth and nail, risking her life to bring peace to the Empire, she had endured the hellish trials of the monster infested forests, climbed treacherous mountains, and faced the demon king head she had contributed to, the peace that everyone now enjoyed only to be discarded like an afterthought Ella, Salonia's voice was sharper now, edged with determination yes, yes, miss, ask the finished guild for information about Grace Bennett Ella's eyes widened at the command Miss Grace, yeah what she's been up to lately, if she was ever dying and survived, and whether her behavior or tone had suddenly changed Salonia's mind raced with suspicion how could it be that all three men, McLean, Ian, and Ref, had suddenly turned their affections to Grace Bennett, it was too convenient, too orchestrated something deeper was at play, and she intended to uncover the truth as Ella hurried off to carry out her orders, Salonia felt a steely resolve settle within her this wasn't just about a broken heart it was about understanding the strange and sudden shift that had upended her life was Grace Bennett merely a pawn in a larger game, or was she the orchestrator of this cruel twist of fate, Salonia turned away from the window, her mind clearer than it had been in months she would not allow herself to be a passive victim of fate she would take control, unravel the mystery, and confront whatever forces were conspiring against her her journey was far from over, and she was ready to fight for the answers she needed with a final glance at the empty space where Maclean had stood, Salonia made a silent vow she would uncover the truth, no matter the cost the fire within her was not just anger, it was the burning determination to reclaim her life and her dignity as she began to formulate her plan, a thought crossed her mind what if this was all part of a greater plot, something that reached beyond the bounds of the empire and into the very fabric, of the world she had come to know, the possibilities were endless, but one thing was certain, Salonia was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead she would no longer be a pawn in someone else's game. The four stood on a sloping hill passing through jagged thorn bushes, the ground, muddy from days of rain, was treacherous, every step threatened the fall, Salonia, her right foot once again sunk in the mud, wore an empty expression, how many times already, she wondered, lady, this way, Ian called, Miss Salonia, the terrain is rough, so please hold my hand, ref offered, Sally, can I pick you up, McLean added, she looked up to see all three men smiling innocently and brightly at her, more dazzling than the sun, thank you all, she said, reaching for Ian's hand, the two went hand in hand, smiling like a flower in bloom, Ref and McLean followed, 
their empty hands cold, but they accepted it just to be with her, Miss, Miss, Ella called softly, Salonia, having fallen asleep, slowly opened her eyes, she had dreamt of one of her most splendid days with them, Miss, the Duke is looking for you, Father, yes, he's waiting in the dining room since you missed dinner, Salonia got up, looking out at the darkened garden, after Ref and MacLean left, she had fallen asleep, she understood her father's concern and constant visits after she had been sick for three months post the Demon King subjugation, Salonia, are you okay, are you in pain anywhere, he would ask daily, worry etched on his face, a few days ago, her father was furious when he heard Ian had gone to divorce her, the Duke of Basin had never liked the engagement, an arrangement made by Salonia's grandfather without her father's knowledge, her father had always said she didn't have to marry if she didn't want to, but Salonia accepted it for her family's prosperity, while brushing her hair, she mused, come to think of it, father must have felt something adult's instincts were often right perhaps her father had sensed something off about Ian, miss, it's done, Ella announced, in the mirror, Salonia saw her neatly adorned face, her blue eyes under long lashes, her cheeks fresh like apples, and her light purple hair, she resembled her mother, a renowned beauty, thanks to a nutrient condensed preservation magic potion her father gave her daily, she recovered quickly with little muscle loss, let's go, father will be waiting for me, I heard you asked Finnist for information on her, her father began as they dined, yes, father, Salonia replied, slicing her veal, the Finnist guild, an information guild run by her father, was trusted to provide transparent, unmanipulated information, Selly, do you have any regrets, if so, I'll tell the Duke of Cherville no, father, absolutely not, Salonia hurriedly reassured, she explained that Ref and MacLean had confessed their feelings for Lady Bennet, she tried to appear nonchalant, but their betrayal had deeply hurt her, she sought information about Grace Bennet partly to absolve herself of blame, wondering if there was an external cause for their change of heart, these just the Duke, enraged, stood abruptly, but Salonia calmed him, father, I'm fine, so please finish your meal, I'm still hungry, La Belle, bring more meat, hurry, the Duke ordered, his anger replaced by concern for his daughter's appetite, Salonia felt a surge of gratitude for her supportive family, she decided to eat well, as her father advised, Selly, how about taking a break from work, her father suggested, I'll take a break as long as my leave of absence allows, I'll think about quitting later, she firmly responded, she had been attending a healing center to utilize her innate healing ability but had been on leave due to her collapse, his imperial majesty wants to host your celebration, her father announced, a celebration, Salonia was taken aback, the Emperor wished to acknowledge her hard work since she missed the victory ceremony after the Demon King's defeat, if your body is struggling, I will talk to His Imperial Majesty, the Duke offered, no, I can't refuse such an honor, Salonia replied, all right, by the way, Ian, what are you going to do with him, I heard you got a written oath when he broke off the engagement, Salonia grinned, contemplating her next move as she savored the freshly grilled meat. I have an idea, Salonia, standing in front of the mirror, reflected on her journey, she had always been careful, considerate, and dedicated, the memories with Ian, Raph, and MacLean, though painful now, were a part of her cherished past, as she made her way to the dining room, she felt a mix of determination and resolve, her father's love and support gave her strength, she was ready to face whatever came next, with a clear mind and a determined heart. Princess Salonia Basin, living in seclusion due to the pain of a broken heart she doesn't even move a single step in her room ha, Salonia laughed at the headline what a ridiculous article true, she had regained consciousness and remained confined to the house, but not because of a broken heart the duke's mansion had everything she needed she couldn't not be luxurious and comfortable in the morning, she woke up on a high quality mattress and a blanket with a crisp, refreshing scent not on a dirt floor where her whole body was exhausted instead of a quick wash in a cold pond, she had a leisurely bath with a scalp massage in a bathroom as large, as a room her meals were warm, glossy, and cooked by the chef himself, 
not dried up bread and cheese she had tea time and sweet desserts whenever she wanted it's the best how exciting she was living like a princess for the first time in nine months since she possessed this body joining the expedition immediately, she had to survive in the wild for half a year, with no food or shelter, always covered in monster blood the comfort she had now was a welcome change shall I tear it up? Salonia asked throw it in the fireplace. Ella suggested yes. Ella quickly tore up the newspaper and tossed it into the fireplace the flames roared, and the newspaper disappeared instantly miss, sue this newspaper. Should I? Yes. You have to show them what happens when they talk nonsense. Salonia smiled at Ella's serious expression. Ella had been very helpful, providing information about nobles and social circles currently. All of society's attention was on Salonia articles about her regaining consciousness and struggling with a broken heart were rampant gossip was a universal pastime I sent the letter you gave me this morning, Ella said thanks by the way, miss, the recipient of the letter a broken bar that's right it's in Cherville teeth at a broken bar Ella hesitated I think it's time to get alimony Salonia had pondered what to ask for from the disgraceful man and decided on alimony to hurt his pride the Basin family was richer than the Cherville family, so she didn't need minds or business right Cian would probably go wild when he read the letter lady. The vice guild leader of Finnist has come to visit you what? Already? Salonia jumped up it was noon, less than 24 hours since her request her father's influence must have worked properly Ella, bring me a shawl yes, Miss Salonia was ready to see her guest with a grim face grace, where do you want to go? Ian Cherville asked, affectionately passing his lover's hair he had a date with Grace tomorrow, but at her request to see him sooner? He hurriedly dressed up and went out he was extravagantly dressed, not looking like someone who had just broken off an engagement um can we go to the dessert shop recommended by the young ladies this time? Grace smiled, accustomed to Ian's kind touch of course where is it? Robin Ian hesitated at the familiar store name Robin was Salonia Basin's favorite shop duke. Grace grabbed Ian's arm with a curious face Grace, wouldn't the new Breswell be better? Its interior is gorgeous and luxurious so I think you'll like it Ian knew Salonia was living in confinement but thought it best to avoid her favorite place pardon, but I really wanted to go to Robink, through your broken bar Grace's eyes drooped in disappointment Ian, holding back his desire to leave, held Grace's hand it's quite a distance there, so we'd better go to Breswell today Duke your broken bar Grace was bewildered but then realized something about his hesitation could it be that you went there with Miss Salonia is that why you can't come with me you're afraid you'll be reminded of your memories with Miss Salonia Grace it's not a broken bar that drew Grace's face hardened Ian couldn't lie I still have no time to intervene right Grace it's a misunderstanding. Listen to me. Ian grabbed her wrist. I've never been there with the Lady Basin. I was just worried the distance would be too far for you. Grace looked at Ian with narrow eyes. Really? Really you're the only one for me ever since the day I first saw you. That woman means nothing to me now. All right then let's go to Robin. Grace crossed her arm over Ian's hurry. Get the carriage. Ian quickly ordered Grace. Now satisfied, smiled Miss Salonia. This is the information you requested Gillian handed a brown envelope to Salonia inside was information about Grace Bennett it's a research involving all the people around her and her family, Gillian added at 24, he was capable enough to be the vice guild leader of the Finnist guild and had her father's trust the information must be reliable Salonia picked up the envelope with trembling hands she hesitated then untied the thread and took out the paper her eyes began to shake violently as she read the letters is this for real yes that's right Gillian nodded his head with a determined expression as if there was no lie is this really all Salonia checked the white paper in her hand from front to back wondering if she had seen it wrong however on the paper only Grace's personal information and her actions so far were written without anything special so were the people around Grace there was nothing suspicious overshadowing her doubts there was none the only special thing is that she interacted frequently with the three men for three months after the victory ceremony but all of those meetings were first recommended to Lady Grace by the male side the victory ceremony that was held while she was down according to sources Grace and the three men first met at the victory ceremony I also looked into the victory ceremony held three months ago just in case 
yet nothing special happened but but, just in case, Salonia waited for Gillian's lips to open with very pale hopeful eyes unlike the first day of the victory ceremony, the three of them only stayed with Lady Grace on the last day however, the answer she heard was in vain after all, that also meant that they fell for Grace more and more during the victory ceremony that lasted all week this is a list of the people who attended the victory ceremony prepared just in case the additional paper Gillian held out had the names of numerous nobles written on it from the emperors and empress, to the crown prince, high ranking officials, and her father but even looking at the list. She couldn't find anything suspicious because she didn't know who was who her arm holding the paper fell helplessly down I'll look into the male side, too, if you want to know Salonia rose from her seat the paper was crumpled in her hand if nothing came out of grace, there was a good chance they wouldn't find anything out of the ordinary in the three men either before returning to the regime, in the first place, she stayed with them for half a year it was useless to investigate them thank you. Gillian thanks for your work she left the drawing room without looking back Miss a broken Barella, who was waiting at the door, cried the moment she saw Salonia's expression it was because she looked like she was hurt let's go back to the room Miss a broken bar why don't you go out instead, going to Robink after a long time, Miss, you like the cakes there, Ella tried to cheer her up somehow Salonia's stride stopped gently eat something sweet and you'll feel a little better, Ella begged she, of course couldn't grasp everything just by looking at the information provided by the guild still, all of this was uncomfortable, suspicious, and Grace was questionable yet the more she thought about it, the more she couldn't shake the feeling that it was getting worse thus she had to do something to wash this feeling away yeah let's go why are you here Salonia, who got off in front of Robink, encountered an unexpected figure F. Hetzel for some reason, he was standing guard in front of the Robink building dressed in white robes embroidered with the temple's patterns, he had a noble and elegant appearance befitting the nickname of the Knight of Pure White he has blue hair and mysterious purple eyes that always remind her of the blue sky unlike many men with thick lines, his face line itself was soft and gentle Salonia liked that kind of ref contrary to his soft appearance, he was strong and straightforward like a straight pine tree a priest and paladin who served God, he had a conservative side like the other priests, yet he was always kind to her and showed unlimited generosity. Miss Salonia the moment Ref saw Salonia, his surprised eyes widened there was no way she couldn't read his waver a why is he surprised? No, more than that, why is he here? Apostrophe. He doesn't like sweets. He usually doesn't even enjoy dessert. Besides, he was even surprised to see her looks like you're here to buy a cake yes what about ref? Ah, I ref glanced at the Robink building with, a puzzled expression his behavior was suspicious to anyone, he seemed to be restless as if he had hidden a valuable jewel in Robink, fearing that the location of the jewel would be discovered ref. Miss Salonia, you'd better not go in according to the owner, all the items for sale today are sold out you're still bad at lying Salonia laughed weakly he's clumsy at lying he always couldn't meet her, eyes when he said something that wasn't even on his mind she knew instinctively that Ref was lying because of his inability to meet her eyes in addition, she could see a showcase full of desserts through the glass in the building Miss Salonia bewildered, Ref hurriedly opened his mouth yet he had no choice but to shut up at her sharp voice looks like Lady Grace is inside Salonia was convinced, recalling what Ref had said to her but I can't stop my feelings for Miss Grace just looking at her from behind is fine, I just want to protect Miss Grace he just wanted to do something to protect Grace she couldn't see the inside of the store from here, but she was sure Grace was in there that's why Ref was standing guard as, if he were guarding a building and he probably didn't welcome her to enter Miss shall we do a takeaway? Ella, who was watching Salonia by her side, cautiously opened her mouth however, her words ended up offending Salonia, who had been quiet no I'm going to eat good work, ref Salonia, who greeted him with a cold attitude to the extent the cold wind blew through, headed to the door of the Robink building without hesitation Miss Salonia ref hurriedly stretched out his hand to grab her, 
yet he couldn't his complexion turn grey he didn't know what to do and bit his lip nervously are you okay? Salonia didn't answer whether she knew Ella's anxious feelings or not the only thing that could be heard was a grunting sound coming from between her lips that had been bitten by her straight teeth she had no reason to run away why should she avoid it, if someone should avoid anyone, it's that woman, not her in addition. Salonia wanted to see Grace with her own eyes not the flat information written on paper, but the lively image of her it was at that moment that she reached out her hand without hesitation and yanked at the doorknob the door that had been closed by someone swung open oh, my the woman who opened the door first let out her admiration and widened her eyes when she saw Salonia in front of her Salonia looked at the woman standing in front of the open door she was a beautiful woman in a light yellow dress with bright blonde hair and green eyes that reminded her of a lush forest hello, Miss Salonia the woman greeted her, folded her eyes in a half moon shape Salonia knew it, intuitively it's that woman. Salonia Basin, one of the renowned four saviors, finds herself in an unexpected encounter with Grace Bennett, daughter of Baron Bennett, at a quaint dessert shop known only to a few Grace greets her warmly, seemingly familiar. But Salonia is taken aback by her forwardness Salonia, puzzled by the friendly demeanor, demands an introduction, to which Grace complies with a smile Salonia retorts with a cutting remark about basic manners, but Grace apologizes, noting Salonia's fame as one of the four saviors Salonia, reflecting on the divergence from the original story where the four saviors were inseparable, feels the sting of their disintegration Ref Hetzel, another of the four saviors joins them, his demeanor unexpectedly protective of Grace, further alienating Salonia Ian Cherville, Salonia's former fiancé Tilda Copyright, arrives and his reaction to seeing her with Grace is icy and hostile Salonia's anger simmers as she realizes Ian brought Grace to her favorite dessert place, knowing it might hurt her Salonia's emotions boil over when Ian protects Grace. Treating Salonia like a threat Grace's subtle manipulation makes Salonia seem unreasonable Ian's disdain and ref's wariness solidifies Salonia's realization that their bonds are irrevocably broken. She attempts to maintain composure despite the evident betrayal by those she once trusted and fought alongside Grace, leveraging Ian's support, delivers a parting blow, hinting at their impending engagement Salonia's defiant response hides her hurt but Grace's final whisper suggests they are alike, twisting the knife deeper Grace and Ian leave, with ref trailing, leaving Salonia alone with her sorrow Ella, her loyal companion, tries to comfort her, but Salonia reassures her and sends her to buy some cake as Salonia stands alone, reflecting on her shattered relationships, a large shadow passes overhead, identified as McLean. The dragon and last member of the Four Saviors seeing McLean ally with Grace further cements Salonia's isolation the red sunset symbolizes the end of her era with the Four Saviors she acknowledges that the others have moved on, finding a new center and Grace Salonia realizes she is no longer their main character and must accept the new reality everything has changed and she must face the future without them. Miss Salonia the moment Ref saw Salonia, his surprised eyes widened there was no way she couldn't read his waver a why is he surprised? No, more than that, why is he here? Apostrophe. He doesn't like sweets. He usually doesn't even enjoy dessert. Besides, he was even surprised to see her looks like you're here to buy a cake. Yes what about Ref? Ah, I Ref glanced at the Robink building with a puzzled expression his behavior was suspicious to anyone, he seemed to be restless as if he had hidden a valuable jewel in Robank, fearing that the location of the jewel would be discovered ref, Miss Salonia, you'd better not go in according to the owner, all the items for sale today are sold out you're still bad at lying Salonia laughed weakly he's clumsy at lying he always couldn't meet her eyes when he said something that wasn't even on his mind she knew instinctively that Ref was lying because of his inability to meet her eyes. In addition, she could see a showcase full of desserts through the glass in the building Miss Salonia bewildered, Ref hurriedly opened his mouth, yet he had no choice but to shut up at her sharp voice looks like Lady Grace is inside Salonia was convinced recalling what Ref had said to her but I can't stop my feelings for Miss Grace just looking at her from behind is fine, I just want to protect Miss Grace he just wanted to do something to protect Grace she couldn't see the inside of the store from here, 
but she was sure Grace was in the that's why Ref was standing guard as, if he were guarding a building, and he probably didn't welcome her to enter Miss Shall We Do a Takeaway. Ella, who was watching Salonia by her side, cautiously opened her mouth however, her words ended up offending Salonia, who had been quiet no I'm going to eat good work, Ref Salonia, who greeted him with a cold attitude to the extent the cold wind blew through headed to the door of the Robink building without hesitation Miss Salonia Ref hurriedly stretched out his hand to grab her, yet he couldn't his complexion turned grey he didn't know what to do and bit his lip nervously are you ok? Salonia didn't answer whether she knew Ella's anxious feelings or not the only thing that could be heard was a grunting sound coming from between her lips that had been bitten by her straight teeth she had no reason to run away why should she avoid it, if someone should avoid anyone, it's that woman not her in addition, Salonia wanted to see Grace with her own eyes not the flat information written on paper, but the lively image of her it was at that moment that she reached out her hand without hesitation and yanked at the doorknob the door that had been closed by someone swung open oh, my the woman who opened the door first let out her admiration and widened her eyes when she saw Salonia in front of her Salonia looked at the woman standing in front of the open door she was a beautiful woman in a light yellow dress with bright blonde hair and green eyes that reminded her of a lush forest hello, Miss Salonia the woman greeted her, folded her eyes in a half moon shape Salonia knew it, intuitively it's that woman, 